Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask all present to please respect the instructions given by our parish ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a social distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times within the church. We will not have a collection at the offertory, but you can use the boxes provided at the entrance or exit of the church, or you can donate online at the parish website. Thank you for your continuing support as your donations help us with the operating costs of the Basilica. At the time of Holy Communion, further instructions will be given, and at the end of Mass, we ask that you please follow the usher's instructions for exiting from the church. Our presider today is Father Critch. Our processional hymn is number 542, Canticle of the Sun. Please stand for the processional hymn. of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Sing to the sun, the bringer of day. He carries the light of the Lord in his rays. The moon and the stars who light up the way unto your throne. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. The glory of the Lord. Praise to the wind that blows to the trees, the sea's mighty storms, the gentlest breeze. They blow where they will, they blow where they please, to please the Lord. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field. And sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. And happy Father's Day to all of our fathers, grandfathers, special fathers here today. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts, to forgive us for the times we have failed to be merciful, to be compassionate to others. We ask the Lord's forgiveness.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty. Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundations of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? when I made the clouds its garment and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far shall you come and no farther and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The words of the Responsorial Psalm. Give thanks to the Lord, his steadfast love endures forever.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
looked favorably on his people. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do, not, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. And Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Today, on the 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time, the Church reminds us that Christ is with us even in the midst of all the storms in our lives. And therefore, this is a great day of celebration and thanksgiving. In the Gospel, after a long day of preaching, if you read before this passage, after a long day of preaching and teaching under the scorching sun, Jesus was exhausted. So the disciples whisked him away in a boat to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus fell asleep in the boat. And that particular lake is well known for its sudden squalls arising without warning. Although the apostles were seasoned fishermen, there was something about the ferocity of this particular storm that really scared them. With the boat on the swamped in the waves, and the apostles did what they could, and fearing for their own lives, they awakened Jesus who was sleeping soundly through it all. Angrily, they said to Jesus, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? So Jesus cal- calms the storm, peace, be still, he says. And then he reprimands the apostles for being afraid and having no faith or trust in his presence. The readings today remind us that God, the creator of the world, has the power to control and regulate all the natural, physical, and spiritual forces in this world. Like the old song goes, God has the whole world in his hands. God responds to Job's question about why he, a good and faithful man, if you read the book of Job, he had so many bad things happen in his life. So he was a good and faithful man. Why did he endure so much suffering and so many storms in his life? So God took the time to answer him, certainly not as Job would have wanted him to answer, but God posed questions to Job in his prayer, highlighting the mighty power and greatness of God in all his cre- over all his creatures. In other words, don't worry, God is in charge. According to our second reading, Paul says, God of his love is always recreating the world, always renewing us. There is no doubt that life, you know, is full of storms. We all have troubles, disappointments and misfortunes that come our way, the loss of a loved one, the breakdown of a relationship, the news of a serious illness, the loss of a job. All of these cause fear for our future and can often severely test our faith. Like the apostles, we are often terrified by what lies ahead. Life storms can become so strong at times that our human strength can no longer support us. We feel powerless in the situation and at such times we can be near despair, so we cry out to our Savior for help And like the apostles, at times we feel abandoned by Jesus, whom we feel is asleep and unconcerned by our distress. We can become disappointed and even angry with God and say, God, don't you care about me at all? Of course, the truth is that there is no assurance that our lives will be completely free of storms. Even Jesus, the Son of God, had storms in his life. He even had great suffering and died The good news is that there is an assurance that Christ is always near us, hidden in the heart of our suffering. 
He is with us in our stormy boat, and he is aware of the storms we are battling. And like the apostles, no matter how experienced we think we are in navigating our own boat, we cannot overcome our storms alone. There is no doubt that before inviting Jesus to calm the storm, his disciples made every effort to control their own boat because they were seasoned fishermen. However, when they failed, they cried out, Lord, do you not care if we are going to sink? In all of our storms, we can always cry out and loud and invite the Lord to help us. We must continue to show profound faith and trust in God, in Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit. For God created us in love, sustains us with his providence, and saves us through his mercy. Now, besides our own personal storms, the church in all of its history, even to this day, has had to go through stormy waters. The storms the church recently has been and continue to battle are to a large extent the result of the sins of some of our clergy who abuse children and some of our church leaders who covered up their cases of abuse. We must always pray for the healing of victims of abuse and do all we can to assist them. Perhaps in the midst of these recent storms, some of us may have been tempted to cry out with the apostles in the boat saying, we are going down, help us Lord. We may be asking like those disciples, where is the Lord in all of this? Like them, we may find ourselves fearful and losing faith in the church as the church tosses from side to side in the stormy waters. As we enter these next months, which will be a very stormy period in the church in our archdiocese, as we restructure to respond to the claims of victims of abuse, we reflect on one of the messages of the gospel today, and that is that the Lord remains with us in the storm no matter what. The Holy Spirit has been there with us from the beginning, leading and guiding our church through the stormy times, and the church has survived and will continue to do so. The Lord is always present to us who at times are fearful and faithless disciples, like the apostles. Christ alone can give us the courage and inner peace which casts out fear on this stormy voyage of life. In the gospel, Jesus brought calm out of the chaos. He saw to it that the boat reached to the other side. Like the apostles, we need to pray and trust that our Lord will bring the church through this storm to a new place where fear gives way to awe and our question, Master, do you not care, gives way to amazement. Who can this be? Even the winds and the seas obey him. So we pray that this storm can open us up more fully to the Lord's life-giving presence and renewing and recreating presence among us. St. Paul makes the wonderful statement at the beginning of that beautiful second reading, the love of Christ urges us on. The love of Christ urges us on. The love of Christ for us was revealed above all in, the de in his death on the cross. It is that remarkable love of God in Christ for us that urges us on, even when we are battling against a headwind. It urges us on until we reach what the gospel calls the other side, the place towards which the Lord is guiding the church, the place where he wants us all to be. We profess our faith now as we proclaim the creed today. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn now in faith and in trust to our Heavenly Father, trusting that God will hear and answer all the prayers we have in our hearts today.
for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for Peter, our Archbishop, that they may have strength and courage to lead and guide the people of God during the times of stormy seas. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Archdiocese, as we navigate through the rough seas of restructuring, that there will be a renewal in faith and hope. We pray that the Spirit of God may enable us all to live our lives trusting in Christ, who will be with us and will help us in the challenges we face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for sailors, fishermen, and women who all earn their living from the sea, that they may be preserved from every danger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for a spirit of healing and reconciliation for our indigenous sisters and brothers who bear the pain of residential schools throughout Canada. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that through our efforts to combat climate change and to keep our environment clean, we may respect the earth, God's creation, our common home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Nellie Murphy and Betty O'Reilly, for all those in hospitals and healthcare facilities, and for all who provide compassionate care for our loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, for Lorraine and Kevin Mayer, Edward Patrick Murphy, Chris, Alice, and Cyril Mollard, and we pray for all deceased fathers, and for all who mourn the passing of loved ones, and Ralph Goff and Gerard Power, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers now in the quiet of your hearts, your intentions on this day. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, may the trials and troubles of life's storm toss waters purify us and bring lasting peace to our souls. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Shelter me, O God. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. You alone are my own. And pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all God's holy church. Let us pray. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of reconciliation and praise and grant that cleansed by its action we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours. He humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hope. And earth, the full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And today remember all the fathers at this Mass. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, 
St. John the Baptist, St. Peter, and St. Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share the peace of Christ now with one another. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my, my roof, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying Amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow towards the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. 
the body of Christ. Jesus, Prince of 
Uh, just a few announcements today. Our 9 a.m. Mass next Friday, June the 25th, will be celebrating the 40th anniversary of the apparitions of Our Lady of Magigoria. The Mass will also be live streamed, so that's our regular Mass at 9 a.m. Busy day Friday at 11 o'clock, the grade 12 students of our Catholic school, St. Bonaventure's College, will have their graduation Mass and commencement ceremonies at 11 o'clock. And this is by invitation only, and the Mass and ceremonies will be live streamed. Uh, this week, uh, from June the 22nd to the 30th, we will be praying the Novena of St. Joseph at the Basilica at the beginning of the Masses, uh, at the 9 a.m. Mass every day, uh, ending up on July 1st with the act of entrustment to St. Joseph to be celebrated all across Canada and all the archdioceses, all the dioceses uh, across Canada. And uh, the, Catholic, the Canadian Council of Catholic Bishops is imploring St. Joseph's intercession for the welfare of our country and for the many needs of society and praying especially for those who passed away during the COVID-19 pandemic. So we'll begin that on Tuesday at the beginning of every Mass, the Novena of St. Joseph, so you can join here or live stream on that particular day. A reminder to please complete your surveys for about the restructuring of our archdiocese. Have a say in that. That will be online or in if you want a copy at the door, if you didn't get a copy, so bring them back here. Uh, leave them here at the desk if you like. And at the back, please visit our new little shrine to Our Lady of Perpetual Help. At the back of the church, a donation from the estate of Lorraine and Kevin Marr. So um, it's a beautiful corner, prayer corner we have down in our basilica down here to add to our, our uh, prayer areas here in our church. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Have a blessing now for all fathers in our assembly here and also live stream virtually we do as well. So a prayer and a blessing for fathers today on Father's Day. Heavenly Father, you entrusted your son Jesus, the child of Mary, to the care of Joseph, an earthly father. Bless all fathers, grandfathers, and other special fathers as they care for their families. Give them strength and wisdom, tenderness and patience. Support them in the work they have to do, protecting those who look to them. As we look to you for love and salvation through Jesus Christ, our rock and defender, we pray for all of our deceased fathers. May they rest from their labors in the peace and joy of the heavenly kingdom. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of us today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our own lives. Have a great day, everyone. Our missioning hymn, number 644, O God, our help in ages past. Thank you.